Good morning. Welcome to First Baptist Cedar Edge. We're so thankful that you've joined us this morning. Um, I'm sure you are well aware that it has been extended, the shelter in place, until April 26th, which is a Sunday. And so we will continue to honor that. And so we will, each Sunday, we will continue to have our messages available online for you uh, to listen and be challenged with the Word of God. Uh, we as an elder board will continue to reach out to you each week to check in to see if you need anything. If you have any questions or concerns, please reach out to us. We are here to serve you, love you, and minister to you. And so with that, this morning, we are going to look at the great discovery where our Savior rises from the dead. And as we begin this morning, please join me in a word of prayer. Let us pray together. Heavenly Father, we are so grateful to come to the house of our God to worship you, the King of kings and Lord of lords. Father, we are so thankful that our Savior did not remain in the grave. And Father, as we come together this resurrection morning, we are here to remember that our Savior is alive. He is risen. And Father, we are so thankful. And Lord God, as we look at this account in the Word of God, give us open eyes and open ears to listen to the Word of God, to be challenged to, as we look about how we are responding to the greatest discovery ever. Lord Jesus, I pray that you use the things that are said this morning to accomplish your will for your glory and for your praise. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. I'd like to start off by reading our text. We're going to look at Matthew chapter 28. Uh, primarily verses 1 through 15. So let us read that together. It says, Now, after the Sabbath, as it began to dawn towards the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary came to look at the grave. And behold, a severe earthquake had occurred. For an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled away the stone and sat upon it. Verse 3, And his appearance was like lightning, and his clothing as white as snow. The guards shook for fear of him and became like dead men. The angel said to the woman, Do not be afraid, for I know that you are looking for Jesus, who has been crucified. He is not here, for he is risen, just as he said. Come, see the place where he was lying. Go quickly and tell his disciples that he has risen from the dead, and behold, he is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him. Behold, I have told you. Verse 8, And they left the tomb quickly with fear and great joy and ran to report to his disciples. And behold, Jesus met them and greeted them. And they came up and took hold of his feet and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and take word to my brethren to leave for Galilee, and there they will see me. Now, while they were on their way, some of the guard came into the city and reported to the chief priests all that had happened. And when they had assembled with the elders and consulted together, they gave a large sum of money to the soldiers and said, You are to say his disciples came by night and stole him away while we were, asle while we were asleep. And if this should come to the governor's ears, we will win him over and keep you out of trouble. And they took the money and did as they had been instructed. And this story was widely spread among the Jews and is to this day. As we look at the word of God this morning, I, I invite you to join me as we reflect on the greatest discovery that took place 2,000 years ago. And that is when our Savior, Jesus Christ, rose from the dead. And as we work through our text this morning, I want you to contemplate and think about this question. How have you responded to the greatest discovery ever? You can follow that up with how has or how does the resurrection of Jesus Christ impact your daily life? Just to remind us, verse 1, it says, Now after the Sabbath, as it began to dawn towards the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary came to look at the grave. Just get the picture. Jesus Christ was just crucified, and he's been in the grave. And you have the two Marys who, who are waiting with, with such anticipation about what has happened to Jesus. Now, when you look at the, the Gospels, Matthew's Gospel has the least amount of detail. So I encourage you to read the other Gospel accounts in Mark 
in Luke and in John, where there's, there's a lot more detail about the resurrection of our Savior. But for the sake of time, we're not going to read each one of those. But what we find in our text this morning in Matthew 27, it talks about Mary Magdalene. And we find, this, we find her mentioned in Matthew 27, verse 56. Listen to what it says. It says, among them was Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and Joseph and, and the mother of the sons of Zebedee. You see, these are the two ladies that we find in Matthew 28, verse 1. And, it, and these two women have great anticipation. If you go down a little further in chapter 27, it, it reads, And Mary Magdalene was there, and the other Mary sitting opposite the grave. You, you see, if you remember from our reading this past week, when, when Jesus' body was taken off the cross, you have Joseph uh, of Arimathea who goes and asks for the body. And he takes the body. And then he goes and he puts spices on it. And then he places it into the grave. But, but from the onlook, you have Mary Magdalene and the other Mary who have anticipation because they had heard what Jesus had said, that he will rise again. But in our text, in verse 1, it says, Now after the Sabbath, as it began to dawn. So this would have been very early on, on Sunday morning that you have Mary Magdalene and the other Mary before it is light out. When, it, when it's still dark, they, they go, they're going out to the grave. They have great eagerness to see what has happened to their Savior. And it wasn't that they were just eager. It wasn't just they were excited to see what happened at the grave. They didn't just sit there early in the morning in their bed or in their chairs going, I wonder what Jesus is going to do. They got up out of bed, they got dressed, and they went all the way to the tomb to see what had happened. They were ecstatic to find out what happened. Look at verse 2. Verse 2 says, And behold, a severe earthquake had occurred. For an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled away the stone and sat upon it, and his appearance was like lightning, and his clothing as white as snow. The guards shook for fear of him and became like dead men. This is the second time that we learn or we hear about an earthquake. In Matthew 27, 51, it says, Behold, the veil of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom, and the earth shook, and the rocks were split. Now we are told in our text that there was a severe earthquake. Can you imagine Mary Magdalene and the other Mary? They get there, they're excited to find out what's happened to their Savior. And what do they find? What do they discover? They, they discover a catastrophic scene, right? There was a earthquake. There was a severe earthquake. I've never been in a severe earthquake. I've been in a little one where I saw things shake in the house in my grandparents in California. But could you imagine an earthquake that was so big that, that has caused the stone to be moved away from the grave? And then, and then you have the soldiers, the guards, they freak out. They shook in fear and they fell like dead men. This was massive. And you have the Marys who go when it's still dark out to the grave, right? They get out there and they see this catastrophic scene. Can you imagine? I, I can only, as I contemplated it this past week, the fear that the Marys must have had as they looked on and they saw it. You know, we have catastrophic, catastrophic, catastrophic events in our world, right? We had 9-11. And I remember watching the news and seeing that horrific scene of those planes that, that crashed into the buildings. And even now, as we watch the, uh, the news or we hear updates on Facebook or whatever it is uh, about the, the virus, COVID-19 going rapid and, and people getting killed and all of these things happening, there is panic everywhere. But it, in my mind, that's nothing in comparison to what the Marys saw as they went to the tomb to see their Savior. They walk upon this catastrophic scene. And it says that there was an angel. 
we see the, the angels when you look at the other accounts in Luke and John. But in Matthew 27, 66, it says, and they went and they went and made the grave secure along with the guard. They set a seal on the stone. Can you imagine when they put Jesus' body into the grave, they took this massive stone and they put it there and they sealed it so it couldn't be moved. But as the Marys were there, when, when the sun is just starting to peak over the clouds, probably, or over the mountains or whatever it is, the catastrophic scene, the stone is gone. The stone is rolled away. The angels, their appearance was like lightning and his clothing as white as snow. The guards were in panic. They were like dead men. Could you imagine that they saw this? And, and listen to the message, right? Listen to the message that the angel tells Mary, both Mary. In verse 5, it says, The angel said to the women, Do not be afraid. In other words, that means stop being afraid. Remember the scene. You got the Marys, this catastrophic scene. They discover a, a tremendous earthquake. You've got the guards who are laying like dead men. They go there, it's still dark, and the stone is gone. It's rolled away, and it's still dark. Imagine what the Marys might have been experiencing. For me, if I was there, I'd try to put myself in their shoes. If it was dark and I see a, a hole in a rock where there's supposed to be a, a dead body, I would be very reluctant to, to peer in or to look in because I would be scared. But this angel says, Mary, stop being afraid, for I know that you are looking for Jesus who has been crucified. In the message of, of the angel, he commands him, he says, stop being afraid, stop panicking. And then he tells him why in verse 6. He says, he, Jesus, the King of kings, he is not here, for he has risen just as he said. Come, see the place where he was lying. Could you imagine that? An angel appears to the, to the Marys and says, Mary, don't be afraid, stop worrying. Now imagine, it's still dark or dusk out. And the angel says, come look in this hole in the rock where it's dark and see for yourself. I can only imagine what the Marys were thinking. I would be extremely nervous if that was me. But the angel assures him, he is risen. Just as he has told you, just as he's been preaching and preparing you for his departure. And then he says in verse 7, the angel says, Go quickly and tell his disciples that he has risen from the dead, and behold, he is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him. Behold, I have told you. The angel says, Stop being afraid. You know, you, you see the response. In Revelation 1.17, when it says, John says, When I saw him, I fell at his feet like a dead man. You see the Marys, they hear the angel's message. The message was, he is risen. He is not here. In Matthew 12.40, listen. It says, for just as, this is a typology for just as Jonah was three days and three nights in the belly of the monster, so will the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. The Mary's great anticipation, they run to the grave to see if it is true, if it is right, what happened to Jesus, their Savior. In Matthew 16, 21, it says, From the time Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things from the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and be raised up on the third day. You see, Jesus is fulfilling what he has been saying, what he has told um, the disciples. And what we find when he thought, makes the, the uh, typological connection to the book of Jonah. In Matthew 27, 63 and said, Sir, we remember that when he was still alive, that deceiver said, Jesus said, After three days I am to rise again. Can you imagine when the angel says to Mary, or to the two Marys, says, Mary, come see, come look. Could you imagine?
One commentator says this, quote, the empty grave clothes lying in the tomb were in the shape of the body of Christ, like an empty cocoon. This proves his body was not stolen, but that he rose through the grave clothes and left them behind as testimonies of a miracle. If his body were stolen, it was stolen by either friends or enemies. If by enemies, they would have produced it and silenced the disciples. If it was by friends, they would not have willingly given their lives for a lie. And his friends did not even believe that he would rise from the dead, end quote. You see, the fact that the stone was rolled away, the stone was not rolled away to give Jesus a way to walk out of the grave. It was like Jesus teleported. Jesus rose from the dead and poof, he is out of the grave. The stone was rolled away to help our weak faith. Our weak faith to see, look, the grave clothes are there. They are in the shape. It is like a cocoon. Jesus, it was a miraculous event that our Savior rose again. And this was the message to, to the Marys. The angel said that Jesus is going ahead of you to Galilee. You see, so as the Marys were there looking into the grave and they, they heard the message of the angel, the angel says, stop worrying. He's risen. He's not here. He's going to Galilee. The angel says, okay, now you go and tell the disciples and let them know that he's going to Galilee. Go and you'll see your Savior. But let's look at how the Marys responded. Let's look at how the Marys obeyed the angel. In verse 8, it says, and they left the tomb quickly with fear and great joy and ran to report it to his disciples. The Marys responded with immediate obedience. They left the tomb quickly. I wouldn't leave quickly. I know it. If I was there, I wouldn't have been. I would have been my jaw on the ground. But no way. Where's my Jesus? Where's he at? But the Marys obeyed. They, they responded to the discovery. Whoa, this is awesome. This is amazing. They're fearful. They're a little bit shaken up going, it's still dark out. And there's this angel and he says, look in the grave. And I peek in and I see a, like a cocoon like wrapping of the body of my savior. And he's not there. But they still obeyed the angel. They were ecstatic. And look at verse nine. And behold, this is mind-blowing. And behold, what happens? Jesus met them and greeted them. It's getting lighter outside. And they came up, and look at how the Marys responded, right? They're probably running to the disciples. Jesus met them and greeted them. And they came up and took hold of his feet and worshipped him. Whoa! This is amazing. This is amazing. Just imagine what the Marys have gone through and they have experienced. They were ecstatic to see what happened to their Savior. They, they see the catastrophic scene. The, the guards are like dead men on the ground. The stone is rolled away. The angel says, look, he's not here. He's risen. And then while they're on their way to obey what the angel said, they're, they're going to tell the disciples, and bam, on the way, there's Jesus. Look at how they responded. They took hold of his feet and they worshiped him. I imagine they fell face down on the ground, grabbing onto him, bowed before Jesus, their Messiah, their Savior, and they worshiped him. This is how the Marys responded to the greatest discovery ever that they're on their face before Jesus, worshiping. How do you respond to the greatest discovery ever? Are we on our face before Jesus every day, worshiping him? Yeah, the, the disciple or the, the Marys in our account, they go, they see, they discover this catastrophic uh, scene. And, and they find their Savior, the Savior meets them and they, they prostrate themselves. They're down on the ground, face first, worshiping him. And they go and they tell the disciples. Verse 10, then Jesus said to them, do not be afraid. Go and, and take word to my brother and to leave for Galilee and there they will see me. Do 
you see, it makes me think of in, earlier in the Gospel of Matthew. In Matthew chapter 14, verse 27. It says, but immediately Jesus spoke to them saying, Take courage, it is I, do not be afraid. Folks, remember what's going on in Matthew 14. We got a minute, let's turn there. 1422, immediately he made the disciples get into the boat and go ahead of him to the other side. Well, he sent the crowds away. After he had sent the crowds away, he went up on the mountain by himself to pray. And when it was evening, he was there alone. But the boat was already a long distance from the land and battered by the waves, for the wind was contrary. And in the fourth watch of the night, he came to them walking on the sea. Y'all, this is Jesus walking on the sea. The disciples are on the boat. The disciples are having a freak out. Whoa, what's happening? We're going to die, Jesus. And they see this crazy guy walking on the sea. And Jesus responds, hey, courage. It's me. It's I. Don't be afraid. That's what Jesus tells the Marys. He says, Marys, don't be afraid. It's me. This is amazing. Jesus tells them, don't be afraid. And then he says, go and take word to my brother. He goes, go tell him. Go tell him that I've risen from the dead, just as I've said. He says, let him know to go to Galilee. That's where I'm going. You look at John's account, and it says in John 20, 17, Jesus said to her, stop clinging to me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father, but go to my brother and say to them, I ascend to, the, uh, to my Father and your Father and my God and your God. Mary's, the Mary's response to the great discovery is that they worship him. They prostrate themselves and they fall on their face and they worship their Savior. Now, verses 11 to 15, let's look at the other response to the risen Savior. And this is the response of deception. And in verse 11, it says, Now, while they were on their way, some of, the, some of the guard came into the city and reported to the chief priests all that had happened. Can you imagine the guards who were there? They were placed there to guard the grave to make sure that nothing happened to Jesus. And there was this tremendous catastrophic scene, an earthquake, wham, hits. And the guards fall down and they're, they, they passed out. They're like dead men. Can you imagine the guards' response when they woke up? What? The stone is gone. Where is Jesus? And their life is on the line. If it is found out that the body of Jesus is gone, they will be killed. But they ran to the chief priests and they explained to them all that had happened. Verse 12, and when they had assembled with the elders and consulted together, they came up with a plan. Here it was. They gave a large sum of money to the soldiers and said, you are to say his disciples came by night and stole him away while we were asleep. You see, this is the response of the guards. This is the response of the chief priests. They made a plan to deny the fact that Jesus rose from the dead. They were going to suppress the truth, even though there was every reason to believe that Jesus was risen. They gave him money. They paid him off. And they said, go lie about it. Go tell everybody that Jesus didn't arise. His disciples stole his body. In verse 14, and if this should come to the governor's ears, we will win him over and keep you out of trouble. They tried to put him in this negotiation. Guards, we're going to save your lives so that you are not killed. Gave him money. And the guards, they took the money and did as they had been instructed. And this story was widely spread among the Jews and is to this day. This is heartbreaking. This is absolutely heartbreaking. We have the greatest event in all of history when Jesus is, he, he rises from the dead. And you have the response of the Marys and, and they they go and, and they hear this extraordinary message from the angel. And the angel says, go and tell his disciples. The, the Marys just didn't just sit there in awe with their jaws on the ground going, what? 
the Marys went. And as they were going, they met Jesus on the road. And Jesus, they responded to Jesus by worshiping him face down. But then we have the response of the guards and the chief priests and the religious people where they said, here's money, lie about it. Suppress it, don't believe that Jesus rose from the dead. Put it down. The disciples, they stole the, they stole the body. So let me ask you this question. So what? This great event that took place, the greatest event in all of history, how are you responding? How are you individually responding to the greatest discovery that has ever taken place in human history? Are you responding as the Marys did? Where they went, they saw, and then they go and they tell everybody, Jesus is going to Galilee. Jesus is risen. Challenge to you and I as believers, let me ask you, Question. Same question I asked you at the beginning. How does the greatest discovery impact your everyday life? Are you ready for the Lord's return? As believers of Christ, you and I ought to be living our lives in such a way that our Lord will be glorified whenever he comes back. What I can tell you is that we are closer to the Lord's return today than we were yesterday. Are you worshiping your Savior? Are we worshiping our Savior? You see, our world is in disarray about the virus. But guys, as believers, we ought to be going and we ought to be telling about the risen Savior. He is our Savior. You see, the Marys, they, they, they saw, they heard the message of the angel, and then they went and they told. As believers, are we going and telling people about our risen Savior? Or... Are you, are you listening, hearing the word of God taught this morning? And are you saying, you know what? I'm responding to the greatest discovery like the guards and the chief priests. And I don't want to have anything to do with it. It's a lie. The disciples stole the body. Folks, if you're here and that's where you're at, I, I pray that you would come to understand your sin. The scripture tells us in Jeremiah Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 9. It says, The heart is more deceitful than all else and is desperately sick. Who can understand it? That's who we are apart from Christ. Because of our sin, we deserve to die and be separate from Jesus for all of eternity in a place called hell. Daniel chapter 12, verse 2, it says that some will awake to everlasting life and some will awake to everlasting contempt, and that's in hell. But you know what? Jesus, that's why he went and he died on the cross. See, he lived a perfect life. And then he went and he died on the cross for my sin and for your sin. The Bible says the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus. It says God demonstrates his own love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Folks, if, if you are responding to the greatest discovery by suppressing and saying, I don't want to believe that Jesus rose again. You need to come to grips with the reality that Jesus rose again. And he's alive today. And we will stand before him and we will be judged. And he says to us in Romans 10, if you confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. So as we close this morning, I leave this question for you. How are you responding to the greatest discovery that has ever taken place? That is the resurrection of our great Savior. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we are so grateful for just the few minutes we've taken to look at the greatest discovery of all time. And that's the fact that our Savior has rose from the dead. And Father, for those of us who know Christ as our Lord and Savior, I pray, Lord, that we would really truly evaluate our lives to see how we are responding to the greatest discovery. And Father, I pray that we'd evaluate it and see how we can grow in that area because we know that sin is real. We know the battle of sin is real. But God, I pray that it would be our desire to worship you every second of every day. 
And Lord Jesus, that there's one listening today who's never placed their faith and trust in Jesus Christ. I pray, Lord Jesus, that today would be the day of their salvation. We are so thankful for all that you've accomplished for us. We thank you that you did not stay in that grave, that you have rose from the dead. We give you the honor, the glory, and the praise in Christ's name. Amen. Just a reminder, as we are not able to meet together in our facility week after week, if, if you do have your tithe or your offering, you can either send it to the church or you can come by and drop it off to the church office. And as I said at the beginning, uh, the elders will continue to reach out to the body of Christ. And if you have any needs, please reach out to us. Let us know how we can serve you and minister to you. I hope you have a blessed Easter.